It is the Frank and Friends Show. Hi there, I'm Frank Murphy. Hello everyone, I'm Asia White. <gasps> You're one of my friends. Absolutely, we go, <laughs> we go a little bit back, don't we? Well, considering how young you are, I guess, in, yes, technically for you, it's a long way back. <laughs> for me, it's just a moment in time. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for filling in for Catherine Frady today. I appreciate that. She's working hard on The Copper Queen, which opens a week from tonight. Which is super exciting. I mean, her work is incredible, so I'll be excited to see that. Yeah, one week from tonight, Flying Anvil Theater, you go to marblecityopera.com slash tickets to, take, uh, to see Catherine. Of course, we want you to support our YouTube channel and uh, like and share and subscribe and uh, ring the bell for notifications. Here's the bell if you ever need anything. Oh, sweet. If anything comes There's up a bell. at any time, you can just, you can just ring it. But don't overdo it because... I'm going to go now. Yeah. Uh, poor, poor Renee. She said, get rid of the bell. But I can't get rid of the bell, Renee. It's, it's a thing. He likes the bell. I like the bell. Um, especially if someone says something stupid, you ring the bell. Oh, perfect. So every time you say something stupid, I'll just be like... That's why it's on your side of the table. <laughs> notice, fair enough, fair enough. Notice it's on... You see, here's the dividing line, and notice it is on your side. Got All it. Right. Uh, we have Frank and Friends show merch, as you can see, by these uh, coffee right mugs. Right here. And also, uh, for example, I like to show the hoodie, even though we're past hoodie season. Uh, I just haven't bought a t-shirt for myself yet because... It's totally okay if you're past hoodie season. One of my best friends has maybe like 30 hoodies. Oh, this She's is always nice. Look wearing at this them. one. Look at that, though. See, where is it? Where's that? There it is. Oh, let me see that. Oh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Did you design that yourself? No, I paid a guy. You paid a guy? <laughs> yeah, paid a guy. Jody Collins from Feral Giant. You see, we've got the nice uh, logo on the back. Yep, yep. Which is also, I'm very proud, on the beach towel. You even have a beach towel? Well, it is beach season. I know, I know. So the problem is, as we've determined on the show, is that I like the logo and the towel too much that I'm afraid to actually soil it and use it. Well, that's why you have multiples. One for use, yeah. one for just being pretty. You're right. I have two, but I, I, I guess I need to get a third. A third. Because I, I don't know why I can't bear to, to, to wipe myself with those. Because I have a pool. I like to swim. You know, and when you arrived today, you said, oh, should I take off my shoes? And I went, oh, I forgot to put on my shoes. <laughs> yeah, no, he really did. And I was shocked that you had a pool. We're actually redoing our pool right now. Yeah. So we bought a new house in Oh, congratulations. You, Thank you and your husband. Yes. Um, but the pool is rather large and we know nothing about them. So we are just... Feel free to ask. I mean, look out the window. You can see that it's... Um, oh, it's true. It's a much nicer pool than we've got. Well, no, it's just that I've already had it redone. I've been through go. what, you've, what you were going to go through. There we go. I, I was looking at some... Uh, you know, I guess it's Google Photos memories or Facebook memories because it was this time of year. Um, believe, I think it was now four or five years ago that I had the whole thing resurfaced and had multiple, oh. have work done on it. But every year, this year it was a new filter. Last year it was, uh, I think we had it power washed or something. It's always something. It literally is always something. That was part, I kind of, <coughs> sorry, I wanted to get rid of the pool, you know, because I was just <laughs> like, they're a lot of trouble. But I think they're going to... Yeah, you're, you're getting choked up about it. I, I am. Emotional. I, I'll tell you what happened. I think I've told this story on the show before when Sarah, uh, Sarah uh, Roberto was here. See, I've known her... I'll get to you with this in a minute, too. But some people, some of my friends, I've known them through multiple last names. So I oh, have to yes. retrain my brain, Asia White, because I knew you before. Yes. And my friend Sarah Roberto, I've known her before. She was talking about how her pool, she doesn't really love it. My neighbor, two houses down... Loves pools, had to put an above ground pool in the backyard because the person they bought the house from filled in the, uh, the in ground pool. So she's got an above ground pool sitting on top of a buried in ground pool. What? I know. It's just How crazy. expensive is it to bury a pool? I don't know. I mean, I guess you could just hire some guys and, and, and buy some dirt and do it yourself, but that would take a while. It would. I'll Google it later. Yeah. You're not going to fill in your pool, are you? No, it's an above ground. Okay. Because that would look really weird. That would look bizarre. If you filled in an above ground. You're not going to do that. Super weird. Yeah. Well, um, so let's tell it, talk about Asia White a little bit. <laughs> okay. Because, I mean, it's your dad gave you the first name Asia. Yes. And kind of created this cool spelling and decided, oh, this is fascinating because, you know, your dad uh, is American and your mom's Korean. So your dad thought, oh, this will be clever. <laughs> yeah. I really don't know what inspired him, really. I mean, I it know was there was because he married a song. Korean lady. I'm yeah, pretty sure. It definitely was that. <laughs> but there was the song um, Asia by Steely Dan. Do you yes, remember that song? Yes, of course I do. I work at a classic hits station. There you go. So he really wanted to spell it A-J-A, but what? figured that people would just call me AJ? Well, yeah, because I, th I don't think a lot of people realize that 
in Asia by Steely Jan Dan is spelled A J A because you look at it and it looks like Aja or Aja exactly or any number of other things. I was also trying to look up the history of the song. You know, like what inspired it. What does it really mean? They have a lot of weird songs. They have a lot. Don't、um, look up the meaning of the band name. Oh, Steely Dan. Don't I don't look, think I ever did. Yeah, don't look that up. Okay, don't look that up. Yeah, I'll, 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 we I, might look it up later. I can tell you. I'll tell you off the air. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I just, I just don't know how. I'm not sure that our friendship has evolved to the level that I can just say it. Say it. Yep. No. 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 Totally understand. Totally understand. So yeah, Asia, Asia White, and then I, you know, married my husband, whose last name is White. Convenient. And the big joke is, you know, I'm half Asian, half White, and here I am, Asia White. Boom. So it's kind of, it's kind of a thing. And your career has really taken off since we first met. We know each other because of the Knox Asian Festival. Yes. You were instrumental in getting that thing off the ground, and、um, I met Kumi, who. Started it、oh, you, yeah. with you and, and others、um, in that first year, and I came to the first year event. And then she said to me at this first Asian festival, she says, "I want you as the radio station to the one I used to work for,、right. become the sponsor of it." So I was then involved for all the remaining years until you know that radio station went under and got rid of everybody. So now I I don't have any connection. Right to the Asian Festival because I don't I don't work at the radio station group that sponsors it. Right. Well, I remember when we did meet too because like I hadn't known who you were yet, but I met you there. I'm sure Kumi had mentioned it.、So. <laughs> There's this guy. He's crazy. Yes. Yes. You know how she is and how she talks. It's just so fun. And so I met you and I was like, wow, this guy like does stuff that I want to do.、Yeah. And so you know I was working in sales at the time. Uh, and then I had decided that I eventually wanted to do something else、mm -hmm. and jump into voiceovers and other things like that.、Yeah. So I messaged you. It had been a while,、yep. and I was like, "Can I like come see you and like talk about this and maybe get some advice?" And we actually did your Tuesday improv show, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is still happening, right? Yeah, it's、uh, every Tuesday night. Please, every Tuesday do, night. Please do come check it out. Absolutely. I live in Newmarket now, so it's a little bit more that, of a drive.、Oh, I didn't know you lived that far away. Yep, we that's moved. A, that's a speed trap. That town. It is. There's cops every. Everywhere. No, I'm serious. That they, <laughs> when you were driving to Morristown or I think Jefferson City, right? You have to pass、yep. through Newmarket,、yep. and the speed limit drops by like 15 miles an hour all of a sudden, and it's like one tiny little sign, and that's the entire budget for Newmarket is speeding tickets. I'm pretty sure. I don't think I would disagree because <laughs>、um, I've talked to a, a cop down there, and I even asked her. I was like, "Why are there so many cops in such a small area? I've never seen this ka -ching, before." Ka -ching, ka -ching, so it would make sense. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely the money. So anyway, you, just, you can pay. You can drive as fast as you want through Newmarket. But just gonna, it'll cost you. It's, cost it's you. not the Audubon. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so you were living、uh, back to this.、Um, you wanted to get involved, and we、uh, you came to the Einstein Simplified Improv Show. Show. Um, I had that old show in Pigeon Forge with Kira,、yep. and we had you on not only、uh, as an interviewee, but you guest, you and I guest co-hosted together before. So when I invited you to be on the Frank and Friends show, it's like, hey, remember that thing we did a couple times? Let's do that again. Yeah, absolutely. And I've taken so many notes from you. Like I, I have a like a little. Oh, journal or whatever, and I've written everything down, and we even went like, "What's the game plan? What steps do you need to do?" And、yeah. I pretty much did all of that. And then by the time we did your the show, was it in Severe G Gatlinburg? Severe the Pigeon Ford show. The Pigeon Ford show. Yeah. Ford show.、Yeah. Um, that was really when I had first started doing everything,、yes. and it has really taken off since then. Well, yeah, you're doing voiceover. You're doing work for PetSmart, right? PetSafe. PetSafe. And what's, what's really great. What's the difference? Ah.、Um, They're totally different brands. I know that Randy Boyd used、oh, to wait. own Pet PetSmart is a, a store. store. PetSafe is just a, is the a electric, brand. The electric collar that keeps your dog from running away. One of the items. One of, one the, of the items.、Oh, tell one me of the items. But what's really fun about PetSafe is I was doing an Amazon Live show with them. Yes. But before the Amazon Live show, my dog got to be a model. I、and、saw、so、this then, on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Then my other dog got to be a model, and then my cat got to be a model.、Oh. So we're all doing like video commercials what a, what a and、life. photo shoots <laughs> with all the animals. They get paid a decent rate, more than minimum wage. Well,、so. you know, they're they have skills. They're they're a featured extra. You know, you can't just pick any dog off the street and expect him or her to sit still and and pose. Has to be brand specific. 
Oh. Like they have to meet, uh, they have to match the brand image. So like one of my dogs does one brand, the other dog does the other what brand. What are the species of animals? Yeah, so I have a border collie, a blue merle border collie. It's beautiful. And then I have a brindle plot hound, and then I have your uh, normal orange tabby. But the the animal world really loves orange tabbies. I mean, if there you look at there is an, an orange cat that lives in the woods behind my house. We just call him Orange Cat. Aww. And I thought he was gone. He, he disappeared for the winter. Yeah. But uh, I found some of his hairballs on the back his deck hair uh, the other day, and I saw him roaming around. Oh my gosh! So Orange Cat is back for those of you who. Our long, long-time viewers I know that Orange Cat apparently Orange still cat. still lives. Well, um, just so that you know, Orange Cats have the best temperament of all cats. And really? Apparently, that's why they're really good for TV and uh, things uh, like that. There was a famous... You, I mean, you wouldn't know who Morris the cat was. Definitely he was, don't. He was the most famous Orange Cat probably on TV, maybe still to this day. What was he in? He was did commercials for, I think it was a cat, well, it definitely was a cat food. Meow Mix? I think it might have been Nine Lives. Oh, okay. Because he one. was finicky. He was Morris the finicky cat, and he was had a great voiceover actor, did the voice. Oh, might have been, they even gave it a voice? Oh, oh my gosh. M Morris the cat was huge. Oh, okay. You know, this is something that's uh, before you were born, I'm <laughs> guessing. Before I was born? Okay. Well, I mean, oh, this oh, was the 70s it. and 80s. Oh, you, weren't, you weren't born yeah, in the I 80s, was, right? I, didn't, I wasn't even a thought. You were born in the 90s, right? Yep. Okay, so yeah, this is, you wouldn't know who this is, but this was big. He would like go on talk shows with hey, his what? handler. What? I was crazy. So he's literally he would, living a star life. He would be in parades. What? Is, okay, that's awesome. I, I'm just, anyway, that's a little side note there. Sorry. <laughs> Morris the cat. It's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. Yeah. So, uh, all right, so you've got this great job at uh, PetSafe doing all that, but you've been doing other things on camera as well. I mean, you I are like the face of the Asian Festival. You'll go be interviewed on TV and things like that. Yes, so I am doing the Asian Festival. It takes place this year again. Finally. Um, it's been on pause for two years because of COVID. I have out-of-town relatives who love the Asian Festival so much they will plan a trip to Knoxville just to come to it. That's what's crazy about the Asian Festival, though, is we have performers come from overseas. We have yeah. Disney World come and perform, like the Taiko drummers. Oh, they're good. And we have people travel from out of town yeah. to come to the festival. Well, it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like the World's Fair, which you know just yes. had the 40th anniversary. I missed it. I was so sad. Well, there's. <laughs> I was so sad. You missed a one-day celebration of the 40th anniversary. I know, I know, I know. I missed the actual World's Fair. Oh, so did I, though. But I was alive. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Were you even in Knoxville, though? I was in Northern Virginia. I okay. was 500 miles away. Okay. And I had just started working in radio, so I'm playing all of these great 1982 songs, and I'm so absorbed in my first radio job. Yeah. Playing, you know, Don't You Want Me by Human League, and I Love Rock and Roll by Joan Jett. Yes. And all of these amazing, huge... Eight, Songs eight six seven five three zero nine by Tommy Two Tone that we still play today all came out in the summer of eighty two. It's just a, it's an, you so look it's at a the charts. Summer. You look at the charts of that year. It's amazing. And I'm trying to figure out why my dad didn't say, "Let's drive down to Tennessee. Let's go to the World's Fair. Why do we do something about it?" But I guess I was you know I was too young and and too self absorbed. Focused, yeah, on what was that? It never occurred to me. And now in hindsight, you know, I love the World's Fair. I have some um, Sun Sphere souvenir type things. I have a program from the 82 World's Fair. You actually have a program? You sent me that video with the Korea exhibition yes. at World's Fair, which is wild. So I actually sent that to the Korean organization. So I was like, look at this. This is so cool. This is a new YouTube channel that East Tennessee PBS started uh, last month where they are putting together all their archives from the 82 World's Fair on YouTube. Oh, so that's just one tiny sample. Of it. There's dozens of videos of the, of the East Tennessee PBS coverage of the wow. opening ceremonies, okay. of the different exhibits. And it's wild to me, because these two guys, you hear these two guys talking during the thing. Okay. Well, there's President Reagan. There's President behind Reagan. Behind the glass. And, and they don't really tell who each other are, but I figured out by recognizing their voices that it's Hop Edwards and Jim Keen, who both were, after the 82 World's Fair at some point, hosts of the Scholars Bowl show that I now host on oh, East Tennessee yeah. PBS. So it was exciting for me that That's uh, super you know, exciting. it all it all uh, goes back. And another person who was at the 1982 World's Fair was the amazing forensic anthropologist, Dr. Bill Bess. Tell me. Well, this is a commercial now for BoneZones.com. Don't forget the S. Because Dr. Bass uh, has been a world-known forensic anthropologist, obviously, for 
well, he came to the University of Tennessee 50 years ago. And for forensic anthropology? Yeah, he's, he, he can basically... Because people go to UT for that, yeah. He okay. basically started the department. Oh, okay. They, they hired him to create a doctoral program and build the department out. He's a big deal. So all of these forensic anthropologists all over the world, and mostly over, over the U.S., but a lot of them got their degrees under Dr. Bass, whether it's oh, master's or PhD. Oh, okay, okay. So for the 1982 World's Fair, Peru decides they're going to bring in a mummy <laughs> and have have it unwrapped at the fair. They unwrapped a mummy at the fair? Yeah. What? So and Dr. Bass was like, well, it's a good thing we x-rayed it first because we were able to, you know, we knew then going into it because it's big, right? Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> well, they unwrap it. It's like a nine-year-old kid who was mummified, so that would have been a bad surprise. That would have been a bad surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so they did, they did? They did, well, he had x-rayed it first, okay, so they good, were able to good, say, good. everyone, this is obviously a child of great stature who obviously died and was mummified by probably his parents and the community and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that's part of one of the things you can learn about when you read about Dr. Bill Bass and his many books, which you can buy autographed copies of them through bonezones.com. Bonezones.com. Don't forget the S. S. And there's all sorts of other merchandise Merchandise. I've got Bill Bass t-shirts and hats and challenge coins. Of course so I do. So you really, okay. Well, I, I mean, one thing you may not know about me is one of my many, many, I have nothing but side hustles at this point, so I can't really call them. Same. They're just hustles. But yeah. One of my side hustles is that I am the MC for Dr. Bill Bass. So when he does a speaking engagement, which you book him through bonezones.com. He's done some in Knoxville, right? Yes. Yeah, because I that's that's who that is. Because I've seen your photos and your like advertisements guy. for yeah. it, and who's I'm like, that? I don't know who that is. Who's who? that guy who makes Frank look young? Because he's ninety four. <laughs> oh, he's ninety four. Well, he will be in August, and we're going to have a ninety fourth birthday celebration. Kudos uh, coming up at Cherokee Caverns, and you'll find out about that, of course, through Bone Zones. Okay. Dot okay. Com. Uh, we'll have a couple of other events where you buy a ticket and you get to meet Dr. Bass, and we have usually uh, like one of those tote bags I've got over there as a souvenir. Yeah tote bag and we put gifts in it. Always need a tote bag. Yeah. Uh, and it's got good stuff inside it. So anyway, that's one of the things you'll find out. Wow, okay. So that's, and I'm just connected. Thank you for the opportunity to connect the 1982 World's Fair and Dr. Bill Bass, who then went on to do everything from, you know, exhuming the Big Bopper, that's one of my favorite stories, to bopper. investigating the Benton fireworks disaster of 1983. Haven't heard of any of these, but uh, I'm well, sure you'll I, fill I can in. fill you in, of course. <laughs> But they're all in the books. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Jefferson Bass mystery novels or the stuff I'm referring to. There's mystery to. novels? I have so much to tell you. I'm so excited. Apparently you do. They're great. They're all set in Knoxville where um, John Jefferson wrote these books with Dr. Bass's scientific knowledge. And they okay. created a fictional character who called Dr. Brockton who has the knowledge of Dr. Bass but the physical and daring do of John Jefferson. So... Dr. Brockton does things that John Jefferson has done in real life, like fly a plane or go uh, to a cockfight in Cock County and then vomit from chewing tobacco. Oh my Whereas goodness. Dr. Bass is sitting at home in the lab going, I wouldn't do that. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, bonezones.com. Bonezones.com. Don't forget the yes. So, um, now, so when we go out, I can do these events. Like, I love doing events. Oh, I love yeah, emceeing yeah, yeah. events. Um, in fact, you texted me the other day and said, can you please come to my event? And I was like, oh, it's 93 degrees and I have chores. Oh, I I should go. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. Like I said, side hustles, side hustles. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to take a break from the side hustles. So tell me about your uh, amazing event that was last Friday with the uh, Korean Association. Yeah, so we actually were at the Muse Knoxville. So the Muse is a children's museum mm -hmm. located in Knoxville. It's actually near the... Um, Chill Highway Park. Ch yes. It's inside Chill Howie, technically inside Chill Howie Park. It is. Uh, and when you go to the Tennessee Valley Fair, for example, they'll have oh, stuff in their Muse parking lot. But the Muse is open year round. It is. My friend Tyrone Beach got a job over there. Yes, I met Tyrone. He was like, You know Frank Murphy? And I was like, Of course I know Frank Murphy. <laughs> you know, I was how like, How come? do you know Frank Murphy? <laughs> so, you know, it's just well, like. Well, Tyrone used to work in radio. Right, that's what he said. Yeah, um, he told you the truth. <laughs> he did tell me the truth. He's he's got an adorable child. Yes. Like he's bringing him to the 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 muse event. Oh yeah, he and his wife Jamea, just uh, lovely couple. Absolutely. So we actually met them at the Christmas parade. Was it that Knoxville holds? Okay. And that so they, they were they walking were by. Yeah. And I was like, oh, by the way, I'm a voiceover artist. You know, if you ever need anything. And they're like, hey, wait a minute. Actually, we're starting a six month like children's story event. Perfect. And we have a storyteller of the month. Would you be interested? Interested in 
me absolutely interested. You, that's the trick when you look at when sometimes you just got to say yes and then figure it out later. I mean, exactly. That's, I know the I know the drill. So they were like, "Can you take over the museum?" And it's just me, and I'm like, oh, "I don't. That's a, that's a lot." So I contacted the Knoxville Area Korean American Association, which you are an officer in that organization. Yes, I'm the director of public right. affairs and media for them. All right. And so I reached out and I was like, "Hey, we have this really cool opportunity. We could make this, you know, Korea culture based. Yeah. Um, and read like traditional Korean." Stories stories and showcase culture, food, all of that. And so that's what we did. That's fantastic. So we just went in there, kids came in, families came in, we sat in the amphitheater. And you wore your uh, traditional... Hanbok. Yes, yeah, so I did wear a traditional Korean dress called the Hanbok. Uh -huh. um, one of my friends also wore one as well. We didn't have any male versions, but the male version is pretty cool too. Oh. So um, maybe next time I'll have a male volunteer don <laughs> one. But it turned out to be a really, really great event. Well, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I'm sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't it's make okay. it. I have to be honest. I Life was... is really busy, and you can't overcommit because yeah. then you have to like back out of things. So. Well, I found out uh, the hard way that apparently I look terrible. Because while you were having this lovely event over okay. the weekend, um, I had a, a plans to uh, meet up with a friend of mine who I used to work with at the radio station, okay. another former coworker, Bruce, and um, we ended up going to Cracker Barrel. Oh, I love Cracker Barrel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to, and, but you know how it is. There's a wait. Uh, Always. So, and Bruce is like, we should not go. Let's go to Arby's. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go somewhere else. But I had gone in. I had put my name on the list. Okay. The list. All and right. I had said, they said, how many? I said two. And they said, uh, it'd be like an hour. An hour? Yeah. What Cracker Barrel are you going to? I guess the world's busiest Cracker Barrel. I guess so. Continue. Well, I mean, maybe I'd need to drive up to Newmarket or, you know. And that one's not busy. There's one up there? Yeah. Where is it? Right before Newmarket. It's somewhere on the highway oh, near okay. exit 407. Oh, all right. Well, anyway, um, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. uh, the one at Cedar Bluff uh, or Executive Park, it's near the old Side Splitters Comedy Club, may it rest in peace. Um, that Cracker Barrel is packed, especially at on Sunday, you know. Oh, because yeah. Because you get the, all the churches are and busy. And then you've got to eat after. And you've got interstate traffic. You've got everything. And that's a busy area anyway. And so. I, maybe we should have gone to one closer to Bruce's house, but he said, no, he'll come to the one closer to my house. Okay. So nice. So I go in, and they're like, it's going to be an hour. And everyone else, all the other people are, who have been putting their names in, like, mad. Like, are you sure? Is it really going to be an hour? And some other lady just came up and said, how much longer? And all these people are just berating the poor dudes who are working the, the counter. Uh, and I mean, there was two guys working. Usually it's, yeah. it was unusual to me, but uh, working the little check-in counter. So I come up and I say, hey, I'm like a table for two. And they're like, what name? I said, Frank. And they said, well, it's going to be like an hour. I said, oh, that's okay. I'm meeting somebody and I got here a few minutes early to account for Fair. that. Fair. They said, oh, okay. And they looked at me and said, maybe it'll be less than an hour. Okay. And I said, that'd be lovely. I had no, more, no pressure. Thank you. So then Bruce texts me. He's like, it's going to be an hour. We should leave. I'm like, no, no, no. Calm let's, down. Let's see if it's really an hour. Right. Because meanwhile, the, the, the guys from the Cracker Barrel can see this. I can see this. There's people just giving up. People bolting and going to get yeah. going to McDonald's or wherever. They just want to get out. You know, they can't wait. Or if they have to be at church at a, uh, whatever time. You know, I tried to time it so that we'd be there at 11 when most of the churches are busy. Right. They're not out of service right. yet. But um, the Catholic Church up the street, All Saints, had a 10 o'clock mass that just gets out at that time. So then it got flooded. So wouldn't you know it, uh, people who recognize me from church are showing up. And um, I, it was a hot day. You know, it was hot all weekend, right? Oh, yeah. So to get a little bit of a breeze, I didn't want to wait in the gift shop and buy little girl dresses for my granddaughter. <laughs> and all the candy. Uh, we waited, Bruce and I waited out on the, as far down on the end as possible because there was a breeze. If you go to the end of the porch, like actually with the, on the side splitter's end of things, you know, further in, uh, there's this breeze coming in from the interstate and there's this breeze coming in. So it's like uh, the wind is just puffing. Yeah. And, um, uh, it's nice. It's cool. And I, you can sit in those rocking could, chairs. Well, this is past the rocking chairs. Oh, past the rocking chairs. I'm looking chairs. like so far at the end of the building. It's like where the, no, you know, Bruce was worried that we wouldn't hear them call us for the table. Oh, I got you. Okay. That's how far out we are. Understood. And I'm doing this to air up my armpits a little bit. <laughs> and we're having a great conversation. Bruce is telling me about his new job because like many of us, you know, radio eliminated us. Yeah, um, oh my gosh, yes, horror so, stories. And then all of a sudden, this guy from church that I know, Dan, comes up, and he's looking at me, and he goes, Frank? I'm like, yeah, hi. He's like, oh, wow, it is you. It is you. I said, oh, yeah. I said, well, his wife, Nora. Yeah, Nora said she thought she saw you, but your belly was too huge for it to be you. 
Stop. No. Did he really say that? He said, Nora said Nora. that it looks like Frank, but his belly is his belly is huge. <laughs> oh my god, what did you and say? I, thought, I said, um, I have gotten fat. I've gained weight. I know I have. I mean, it was the I Working at home, I've kind of gained, you know, I need to be out and doing things. I, I At least he didn't touch your belly and say, like, when's it due? <laughs> so then I'm trying to figure out, I, I, I'm the, I mean, I've been, I'm not huge, huge. I mean, this is, I'm wearing some of the same shirts. I've, I've, I've gained weight, lost weight. Right, but I'm still as wearing, people do. But I, last week on the show, I wore a shirt that I bought when I first moved to Knoxville because I'm basically that so you same. still fit, yeah. Same size again, right? And I said, well, maybe, I said, I jokingly said, well, you know, the wind is causing my, my shirts to, I have to it tucked out, puff. To, to poof out. Maybe that was it. So, yeah, that must have been it. That, was, that had to be it. Sure, that was it. <laughs> Let's go with that. Did you, did you talk to Nora? Did you call Nora out? Did you text Nora? Well, Bruce and I go and we get a table because we get, it turns out, of course, that we didn't have to wait an hour. We had to wait like 20, 30 minutes, Hallelujah. maybe max. You know, so we go and we sit. And uh, sure enough, they, they bring in, Dan and Nora to the um, table like two away from us. Oh no! <laughs> and you can tell that they're looking to see what I'm eating. Oh no! You know, <laughs> I've got the hash brown casserole. Oh spread. my gosh, the hash brown casserole is so good. And Bruce is like, I told Bruce, I said, Bruce, you should get the hash brown casserole because there's some problem with with hash browns in um, in the Cracker Barrel world. They're out of like you can't get regular hash browns or something, but you can get it in this casserole with the cheese and the bacon. Oh, I didn't know that was why. Uh, maybe that was a thing. But anyway, you can get it. You know, you're talking about you got yeah. the hash browns and the cheese and yeah, the bacon and the, and the eggs, any style on top. Oh, so good. And then the crispy onion rings. Oh, yeah. It and it's good. not that huge of a serving. It's like a normal size. It's a small, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice, it's like a, not even a, as big as a dinner plate, right? Yeah. But it's got, it fills you up. And Bruce got his thing, which is the French toast and the, and the scrambled eggs. And he's looking at me the whole time going, I'm getting that next time. <laughs> you know what you should get next time, though? But it might contribute. The old timers breakfast. Go no, ahead. no, okay, no. Let me, let me it's um, it. Cracker Barrel is doing a limited time um, chocolate. What, oh. is, what is it? Chocolate. Um, like the a, hot cocoa kind. So it's hot cocoa. Yeah, like a drink. Mousse. Oh. Yeah, on top. And every time I go to Cracker Barrel now, no matter what time of day it is, I have to order one. Do you like their coffee? I don't drink coffee actually. That's news. <laughs> right? Breaking news, Asia does not drink coffee. Where's this energy coming from? Um, well, I'm not a fan of Cracker Barrel coffee, but I, I was so desperate one time for a kit of caffeine that I decided to splurge and buy their latte, which of course okay. is much more expensive, Yeah, but it's espresso and that's great. They're lot, it's funny how I, their coffee to me, it tastes watered down and, and doesn't even wake me up, but, but the espresso was, I thought, as good as you would get at a high-end uh, coffee shop. Well, if you're not a coffee drinker like yeah. me, you just Crazy. pop those caffeine pills oh. and uh, your life will will be so much better. <laughs> okay. Well, I know people who get caffeine headaches. Oh, no, definitely caffeine pills. All right. I have one more uh, question before we wrap up the episode. Yeah. We talked about PetSafe. We talked about your dogs. And we talked about your cat. Yes. Do you have any other pets? I do. So... And is it here? It is here. <laughs> so, uh, long story short, guys, uh, I did bring my axolotl over to, go get, uh, go get to him. Frank's house. What's it? An axol... What is it called? An axolotl? Axolotl. Yeah. So, he's really, really cute. I've named him Tofu. I did get confirmation that he is a boy today because uh, you can well, what, can tell. I, may, can you open it? Yeah. So we're gonna have it. to get. We'll have to get some some uh, B roll and, and put this in here. <laughs> this is very. Oh God. This or is very temporary. Yeah. Here's, here's it's a okay. tissue. Thank you. It's very temporary right is it a, now. Is he a fish? No, he's kind of a like newt? a salamander oh, family. All right. Um, they originally came from like one specific. We can see lake. him here, right? We're, we actually oh, yeah, got, we got him on camera right there. Perfect. He's alive. He's alive. How can you tell? Well. Because he's not dead. If we poke him. Oh, I see. oh see his little his little, little gills moved. Or I, I'm those not are. sure what those are. Those is, is <laughs> so explain this creature to me again. Yeah, so he's a salamander. I think they come from Mexico, like one specific lake. Um, they're solitary creatures. I mean, you can have more than one. So he's been sitting here for the whole show. Is what you're trying to he's tell me? He's been sitting here. He rode in the car. Like all the way here, he does have a twenty-gallon tank at the house, but, so he has a lot of space. But today, he's in his little Tupperware. Because you couldn't leave him home alone. 
Well, I'm trying to get more information about him. You oh, know? you just got him? Uh, I got him a couple of months ago, but like today I learned that he's a male because on the... Did, his... you, did you bring him to a certain location to learn this? Yes, I took him to an aquarium store not oh, okay. too far away. I, that's why... <laughs> All right. All right, now things are starting to make sense. Because you live in Haymarket, I'm thinking, why do you drive around with With your... an axolotl. Yeah, spell it for me. A oh, gosh. A -X A-X-O, axo, L-O-T-L. Don't, right. don't, like... Well, no, we'll Google it. I yeah, mean, we'll Google I, I mean, it. Like, why don't I Google it now? But they only do cold water. They're really cute. This one's an albino axolotl. Okay, um, well, you did spell it correctly. Oh, I did. They Look are that education. an amphibian. Amphibian. Um... A pedomorphic salamander related to the tiger salamander. Don't know what it is. Originally found in several lakes, such as Lake, can't pronounce it, underlying Mexico City. <laughs> um, oh, Mexico is right. They're unusual among amphibians in that they reach adulthood without undergoing metamorphosis. So, are, if someone they asks. They go through, wait, salamanders go through metamorphosis? I thought that was a bug thing. Well, maybe salamanders, I, do they start out like tadpoles, like um, frogs, and, and grow? I'll have to look at National This one Geographic. apparently does not. This one apparently, what you see he's is what you He's a sub-adult male. So he's not full um, grown Oh, yet. it says here that they're a friendly, interactive aquatic pet that will give you years of enjoyment if kept properly. Yes. So we're keeping him they're properly. relatively easy to care for once they're properly housed and fed. And you can share photos of your happy, meme-worthy salamander <laughs> with the world. Well, he is really, really cute. Like I said, Here's I'm another question tofu. Here's another question on Google. Um, do they eat humans? Um, okay. They are carnivorous, but I don't. They eat like blood worms, black worms, tadpoles, insects, and some fish. Yes, I can't put my betta fish with him. They're not known to attack humans, but he's I mean, bit me though. But it doesn't hurt. Like sometimes you just want to poke him because they're so like. I mean, he's sly. I don't know. You want to? I don't know. And he'll just be like on my finger, you know. <laughs> and it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> well. <laughs> Take your get your phone for a second. Make a little B roll video of him for me, <laughs> so I can I can cut that in. Okay. Because I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> he's really cute, guys. If you need to just look up axolotls on YouTube, they're yeah. so cute. Just make a little because um, your my phone. I need to get a new phone in my camera. You just need a little v, you know a little video of him that we can uh, we can insert into the show. Absolutely. You're making a video of him? Yep. Oh, look at that. He's even moving for you and everything. Yep, he is so thoughtful. moving his Okay. Little... Well, that was a surprise. I know. I just showed up at, at Frank's front door with the axolotl, mm -hmm. and he was like, what is that? And I was like, well... She started to tell me, and I said, wait, 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 save it. For the show. So we did. All right. And here he is. <laughs> and then I almost forgot about him until the very, very end. I, I thought about it. I, thought I should bring this up when we talk about pet safe, and then off we go on another topic. It's okay. I, that's how you and I are. We just go on yeah. tangents. All right. Well, what a delight having you here, Asia. I hope you'll come back for another episode. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, there's so many things we want to tell you about. Of course, you can buy the Frank and Friends show merch, and I guess Ready you could, for the beach. You could use this if you need to mop up after. What's Axwaddle's name again? Tofu. Tofu. If you wanted to mop up uh, the, the little bit of water. The there, water that I you spilled. Can, here, just go ahead and clean yourself. Oops, thank you. Thank yeah, you. all right. <laughs> <laughs> you can find that at uh, frankandfriendsshow.com slash store, where we have all of the fabulous merchandise. Just like this cup. Mm -hmm. We also uh, encourage you to listen to all sorts of audio entertainment when you go to audible.trial.com slash show. By sampling um, Audible, we you're helping the Frank and Friends show because it's, it's an ad, obviously. You're helping us when you do that. Use our code to sign up um, at audibletrial.com slash show to get a free 30-day premium membership. You get to try the premium for 30 days. Audible's great. So premium Audible, yeah. don't miss it. And when you're premium, you get an MP3 download every month. So during that trial period, you also get an MP3 download that you get to keep forever, whether you continue with the trial or not, or even if you get the lower level, whatever. So um, to check it all out, there's just uh, tens and tens of thousands of audiobooks. There's podcasts, including ours. There's custom audio entertainment. And it saves your space when you switch from device to device. Oh my goodness, yes. You won't have like bookcases everywhere and all. Yeah. And then when you move, you don't have to like... Right, your book's all, all everything comes with you because it's all electronic. And whether you're listening in the car or at home, you know, across devices, it just pauses and remembers where you are. All right. Well, outstanding. Anything you want to plug, Asia? 
No, thank you for having me. Thank you for having Tofu as tofu. well. Tofu, I love We've Tofu. We've had a great apparently. time. We have. Uh, don't forget, one week from tonight, Catherine Frady stars in The Copper Queen with yes. Marble City Opera. MarbleCityOpera.com slash tickets. I'll be there a week from tonight, and I hope you will too. Uh, this is the Frank and Friends Show. I'm Frank Murphy. And I'm Asia White. And we'll talk to you again next time. Great job. Thank you. So you think it went okay? Yeah, I'll save that though. I will stop the show probably first now. Perfect. Okay. okay. But yeah, you did great.